this year. That, of course, the loss to Tennessee. In the first quarter, Jackson gave the Plainsmen of Auburn a 7-0 lead on this 53-yard touchdown run. And you can see there the agility as well as the speed as he made that cut at the 10-yard line to get in and make it 7-0. But Florida State came back to take the lead in the football game, tying it up first on a Darren Holloman touchdown run on a reverse. And then this Auburn pass was intercepted. Eric Williams took it in from 17 yards out. At that point, Florida State led 14-7. It was 17-17 at one point. Fullwood broke the tie early in the third quarter to make it 24-17 Auburn. And then Bo Jackson again, this time a 35-yard touchdown run as Jackson made it in to give Auburn a 31-17 lead. From that point, with Florida State having to throw the football, it became a debacle as shortly Wigan got a touchdown run for Auburn to make it 38-27 after the Florida State field goal. Then Kevin Porter got this interception, went 33 yards to make it 45-27 Auburn. And there's a shot of Bo Jackson who finished the day with 30 carries for 176 yards, two touchdowns, and we remind you of the statistic. Jackson had a chance to become only the second man in college football history to rush for 5,000 yards, or excuse me, for 1,000 yards in the first five games of the season. He was taken out of the game with a fair amount of time remaining, more than five minutes, and fell nine yards short. But nevertheless, Bo thus far with 991 yards on the season. So the Plains, tough weekend for the local teams. Florida State losing at Auburn. Same street body. Bobby Bowden has conquered a lot of foreign turf in his day, but it's the Auburn Tigers who own the deed to his land, be it home or away. Fourth rank Seminoles found out it's still a tough road to hoe on the Alabama Plains, as we hear from Bob Warner. For Florida State, the Auburn series has been a litany of losing. In 13 previous meetings, the Seminoles have hit the victory jackpot only once. Today's crapshoot came up snake eyes again. Less than two minutes into the game, bullet back Bo Jackson set the tone. He took the handoff at the 47, bounced outside, and was gone. Greg Newell missed the tackle, as did Stan Shiver, and then Martin Mayhew. The Heisman Trophy shoe-in broke it for 53 yards and the touch. It was 7-0 Auburn. But Florida State answered right away with the score on their initial possession with a Bobby Bowden staple, the old reverse. Danny McManus to Tony Smith to Darren Holloman, who ran an untouched from the four to square it at 7 all. At that time, it didn't seem all that crucial, but it was a sign of things to come. Mistakes with a capital M. Derek Schmidt could have given Florida State a 10-7 lead, but he missed a chippy field goal from 28 yards out, one of two misses on the day. However, this cloud had a silver lining. Auburn got the ball back, and three plays later, stumbled. Quarterback Pat Washington tried to hit Jeff Parks in the flat. Eric Williams knocked the ball into the air and then caught it. He was off to the races, 17 yards for the touchdown. Florida State led it 14 to seven, and that's the way the first quarter ended. The clubs then resurrected the childhood game of follow the leader. Auburn riding the wheels of halfback Brent Fullwood moved the ball downfield with ease. That set the table for Reggie Ware, and everybody's least favorite highlight, the one yard fullback dive into the end zone. It was 14 apiece with eight minutes left in the second. The seesaw then swung back into Florida State's favor. Derek Schmidt boomed a 42-yard field goal, and the Seminoles led 17-14. It was their last lead of the day. Auburn came right back with three of their own. Chris Knapp hit this 34-yarder, and it was 17-17 at the mid-break. Time to take stock, to pass along information, and any Auburn fan who wanted a ride. In the second half, it was Auburn that gave Florida State the ride. After an Eric Thomas interception, the Tigers marched downfield and scored. When Brent Fullwood followed student body left into the end zone, 24-17. Less than a minute later, Bo Jackson put seven more on the board with one of his patented runs. Pure power with layers of speed. He went 35 yards down the sideline to jack the lead to 31-17. But Florida State refused to fold. Tony Smith scooted in from two yards out. It was 31-24 with 5-0-1 left. That's when the wheels came off save for Derek Schmidt's field goal. In the next five minutes, the War Eagle would flap his wings to the point of exhaustion. Auburn scored 28 unanswered points. It began here when wide receiver Freddie Wigand took the end around and scored from 14 yards out, 38-27. On the very next play, a rusty Eric Thomas put up a wounded quail. Kevin Porter picked it off, 
and had nothing but green acreage in front. He returned at 34 yards for the score, 45-27. I think maybe if I'd have played a couple of games before, that uh, I'd have had a feeling of it. Just 45 seconds later, Chip Ferguson took over for Thomas. The freshman was hit in the back. The ball floated into the hands of defensive tackle Ron Stallworth, who lumbered in every sense of the term 22 yards for the touchdown, 52-27. It got worse. 22 seconds later, Ferguson took the snap, or rather didn't. Auburn recovered. A couple of plays later, Demetrius Threat ran it in from eight yards out to make the final score 59 to 27. After it was all over, Bo Jackson described things perfectly. And it just went haywire in the fourth quarter. It was like twilight zone out there. As for Florida State, no excuses were necessary or offered. I thought we'd win the ball game. The game, up to the first 55 minutes, we were behind, what, seven points, something like that, or four points or something. So we were in it for 55 minutes, and then they, they busted it wide open. The Seminoles fall to four and one, and surely out of the top ten. Bob Warren, Channel 6, Eyewitness Sports, Tallahassee. The floor